Are we seeing an evolution of the cow vet? Will he still be able to prank test and semen test and do the pathologies? Hello, Palpation Nation, and welcome to the vlog. Today I'm heading out prank testing. I also have a phone call booked with a television producer. Don't get your hopes up. I've had lots of phone calls with television producers in my life and uh, nothing's ever came about it. So it's like a one in a thousand or a million or whatever chance. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I always entertain them at the very least. And then we have our cow-calf producer meeting tonight. Terry Clausen. And then we have a, and then we have a cow-calf and then we have a cow-calf producer meeting tonight, so I gotta try to get back quick. Okay, goodbye. Hello, Cody speaking. Good, Terry, how are you? I'm just getting you oh, switched oh, over. Oh, I was just jumping in my truck right now. Okay, already. I'll finish the break testing for today. Just had some good home cooking farm lunch. Now Phineas and I are gonna rush back to Airdrie, I'll finish up my PowerPoint presentation for tonight. And then we are off to the bicycle hall for the annual cow calf seminar. Finny, did you have so much fun playing with farm dogs? Yeah. From cow vet Cody back to meeting Cody. I feel like you guys are seeing more meeting Cody than cow vet Cody. Are we seeing an evolution of the cow vet? Will he still be able to prank test and semen test and do the pathologies like he always did before? Or have we lost him to the world of business? Find out in the next 300 vlogs. Okay, so after the prank test, I had a partner meeting, then I ran home for a quick shower, and now I'm heading to the meeting. I will be presenting, and I will share some of that with you guys. I've, I've been toying around with the idea of turning some of these meetings into webinars, uh, these producer meetings, and then sharing them with you guys. So leave a comment below if you'd be interested in such a thing. Uh, kind of like for veterinarians, vet techs, and also producers, sort of like some continuing education type stuff. So let me know if you guys would be interested in anything like that. We shall see what happens. Guys are the camera table too. Mike. 
Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, we'll get this show on the road. It looks like everybody either has eaten or is comfortably in the middle of dinner, so. Okay, thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, I really appreciate all of the lovely faces out there. There's still tons of pizza, uh, still tons of pie, so don't be shy. We don't wanna eat pizza at the clinic for the next month, please. As most of you would know, I am somewhat passionate about your guys' cow's poop. I think I've talked to all of you in the last six or seven years about strategic parasite management. So the passion started in this 2011 trial work that we did on grass cattle and grass cattle coming into the feed yards. I'm not gonna go into all of the details of the project that we went through, but one of the first things that we recognized is there is a significant parasite burden going on in Western Canada across both the yearlings and the cow-calf herd. Here you can see all of the different pastures that we had looked at throughout, throughout this 2011 trial in a variety of different geographical locations, both in drought areas, in wet areas, and it really started to give us a sense of what was going on. And as you guys can see, this is why we were so concerned. These, these numbers are screaming high levels of, of parasite burden within the herds. 147 would be considered an extremely high uh, burden. That he graduated from WCBM in 1991 and began working in uh, Pierceland, Saskatchewan. After one year in Saskatchewan, how do you, how do you maximize the value of your crop, calf crop? I got four points. The number one is to maximize genetic similarity and quality within whatever breed it is you choose to have. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe breed matters at all. I, I would rather kiss a man's wife than tell him that the bulls he's using aren't the right ones. Um, <clears throat> we, can sell, we can sell good anything. We can sell good Herefords, we can sell good limos, we can sell good Simmentals, we can sell good Charlet. We can sell good everything. And choice of breed is like arguing with a person about religion, uh, trying to talk him out of being a Catholic, tell him he should discipline his kids more. Uh, one of the things that I, when I started to cut my teeth in the industry 20 years ago, it, there were nutritionists at almost every feed mill across the province. And now there's corporate nutritionists who are in an office, in a, in a head office somewhere. They probably don't get out to the field a whole bunch. So there's a little bit of lack of nutrition support access. Back on Halloween, coincidentally, there was a fire. Hopefully it had nothing to do with a party at a, at a plant in Germany that produced 60% of the world's citral product. And I used to sell vitamins, I didn't even know what this product was when I heard about it. <clears throat> but it's used in the, in the manufacture of vitamins A and E. And what happened was there was immediate price increase. Thanks very much for the chance to, to talk with everybody tonight and, and give you a sneak peek into the future of animal agriculture. Yeah, before I get started though, it is very important that I recognize my team at Feedlot Health Management Services. Pictured here are all the individuals that I have the pleasure of working with on a daily basis. We have an area that I'm most excited about is remote monitoring technologies and very excited to, to visit with everybody about what we see coming down the pipe. Amazingly, two of, when we look across all of North America, all the countries we work in, two of the, probably the best data collection systems for cow-calf producers are found here in central Alberta. I don't think it's a coincidence because some of the most progressive cow-calf producers in the world are here in central Alberta. A lot of them are in this room, okay? Out of all the systems that are out there, the two that are probably the best, one of them is the calf book that is offered by VAHS, okay? It allows you to, to, to add animals, to record events in there, record group events, manage inventory. That's the, the Cinevex C. It's a little bitty implant. It's worth 25 pounds at weaning, okay? And you're probably, if we look at, at, at $2 a pound, that's $50 that you're giving up. All finished the producer meeting. I think that was one for the record books. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna beat next year. All the speakers were fantastic. Uh, it was just a really good producer meeting. What's Sienna doing? She's ruining the vlog. What do you even want? You just wanted to bomb the vlog? Rude. And that's the day.
I like in here. Stay out of my gas hole. <laughs>